Hi everybody, this is John from OFAN, Omega Fats Action Network, and today we're going to do a science review uh, published from Oxidative Medicine and Cellular Longevity. This is entitled Omega-3 Fatty Acids and Depression, Scientific Evidence and Biological Mechanisms. Now this is a pretty in-depth study. I will be placing the link to this study below the video so that you can review the information in depth at your leisure. Now I do read aloud for the visually impaired and small device users. If that does bother you, go ahead and just mute that and review the information through the link. Okay, hope everyone's having a good day. We're going to get right into it. Uh, I'm going to go over the abstract first, and it's very interesting before we get into this what i've been able to find out as a researcher is that our current medical and scientific advancements in terms of research and findings vastly outpaced our medical education curricula so we're in other words we're learning things about the human physiological processes to such a degree that the actual material to educate our doctors and nurses and medical professionals isn't created and is not even close to keeping up. So Omega Fats Action Network, OFAN, aims to bridge the education gap through videos like this, public outreaches, and really reaching out into the community to share the importance of fatty acid balance and omega-3 fatty acids from clean plant sources, not from ocean toxic sources, um, marine sources at all, no. So here we go. Uh, the changing of omega-6 and omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs, in the food supply of Western societies occurred over the last 150 years. It's thought to promote the pathogenesis of many inflammatory related diseases, including depressive disorders, uh, such as mental illness and a myriad of other diagnoses as well in terms of mental uh, health. Moving on, several epidemiological studies reported a significant inverse correlation between intake of oily fish and depression or bipolar disorders. Studies conducted specifically on the association between omega-3 intake and depression reported contrasting results, suggesting that the preventive, or preventive role of omega-3 PUFA may depend also on other factors, such as overall diet quality and the social environment accordingly. Uh, to tarry prevention with omega-3 PUFA supplement in depressed patients has reached greater effectiveness during the last recent years, although definitive statements on their use in depression and therapy cannot be yet freely asserted. Among the biological properties of omega-3 PUFAs and their anti-inflammatory effects and their important role on the structural change of, uh, changing of the brain should be taken into account to better understand the possible pathway through which they can be effective both in preventing or treating depression. However, the problem of how to correct the inadequate supply of omega-3 fatty acids in the westernized country's diet is a priority in order to set food and health policies and also dietary recommendations for individuals and population groups. There's a lot of information to go on here. Um, so as we go down here and take a little bit more of an in-depth look, we're going to go over the burden of the disease of depression. And this is interesting. A lot of people aren't familiar with this, but we're going to go over it real briefly. And then uh, we'll let you all uh, go over the rest of the information in depth at your leisure with the link provided below this video. Depression is a mental disorder characterized by sadness, loss of interest in activities, and decreased energy. Other symptoms include loss of confidence and self-esteem, inappropriate guilt, thoughts of death and suicide, diminished concentration, and disturbance of sleep and appetite. 
There are multiple variations of depression that a person can suffer from. One, depressive episode involves symptoms such as depressed mood, loss of interest and enjoyment, and increased fatigability, categorized as mild, moderate, or severe. Bipolar um, affective disorders typically consist of both manic and depressive episodes separated by periods of normal mood. Diagnostic criteria for a major depressive episode from the DSM-4 include a depressed mood, a marked reduction of interest or pleasure in virtually all activities, or both, lasting for at least two weeks. In addition to this, three or more of the following must be present. A gain or a loss of weight, increased or decreased sleep, increased or decreased level of psychomotor activity, fatigue, feelings of guilt or worthlessness, diminished ability to concentrate, and reoccurring thoughts of death or suicide. Particularly when long-lasting with moderate or severe intensity, depression may become a serious health condition. In about 20% of the cases, however, depression follows a chronic course with low rates of remission, especially when adequate treatment is not available. The reoccurrence rate for those who recover from the first episode is around 35% within two years and about 60% at 12 years. Still seems um, pretty far from uh, getting to that 100% there, so it does have a massive impact on uh, human health here. Uh, the recurrence rate is higher in those who are more than 45 years of age, and depression is associated with significant disability and with excess mortality, particularly increasing the risk of cardiovascular diseases. How interesting that depression and mood disorders and mental health uh, issues and disorders are linked to increasing the risk of cardiovascular diseases. Very interesting. Uh, by 2020, depression is projected to be the second leading cause of disease burden worldwide after heart disease. Depression is associated with dysregulation of circadian rhythms, high incidence of sleep disorders, and anxiety. Depression is estimated to affect 350 million people. The World Mental Health Survey conducted in 17 countries found that on average, about 1 in 20 people reported having an episode of depression in the previous year. Depression is a leading cause of disability worldwide in terms of total years lost due to disability, especially in high-income countries ranging from 3% in Japan to 17% in the United States. In the most countries, the number of people who would suffer from depression during their lives falls within an 8 to 12% range, suggesting significant increased rates of depression in high prevalence populations, example, uh, U.S., than the large sample estimates from the 1980s and 1990s. Furthermore, recent studies reported that prospectively observed cumulative prevalence of depression resulted nearly twice as high as the lifetime prevalence of major depressive episodes reported by cross-sectional studies during the same time period. Nevertheless, the mental health budgets of the majority of countries constitutes less than 1% of their total health expenditures. But more than 40% of countries have no mental health policy and over 30% have no mental health programs. Moreover, both direct economic costs of depression in terms of cost of treatment and direct costs through lost days of work and reduced productivity represent a major issue for public health operators. So I'm going to go ahead and put the link uh, underneath the video, review the rest of the information. Omega-3 fatty acids uh, definitely uh, have a massive impact on mental health and regular medical afflictions as well. Uh, this is John from OFAN. Let's bridge the education gap together. 
Have a great day.